What's going on people, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to another video for you guys today. First thing I want to say is if you guys are enjoying this content that I'm putting out, don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. Also let me know if you guys enjoyed the new intro that I just made. By the way, shout out LJ made it for the music as well, he's been behind most of the music that I've been using this season, either on this channel or on Matchday Vlogs back on Blues Fans TV as well. So if you like it, I'm going to leave a link to some of his music down in the description below, please don't forget to check it out. Now, it's Sheffield United versus Chelsea, it's third versus the seventh match day 35 is upon us and it is the last four games of the season and Chelsea are enjoying an eight point cushion to sixth place Wolves which means that if Manchester City potentially don't get Champions League football next season and fifth place does give us Champions League football that means Chelsea will be one point away from clinching Champions League football obviously we are not happy with third place especially when we're sitting pretty in third place so we are going to want to take maximum points and whatever we can from the remaining four games now, Sheffield United, they are a very weird team to predict, I can't lie. No one expected them to be this close to European football as a promoted club, especially with the way that they've been playing coming back from lockdown. They didn't win any of their first four games coming back from lockdown, but are now unbeaten in their last three. With crucial wins against Tottenham and against Wolves leaving them still around the conversation for European football and we can't attempt to underestimate Sheffield United either because you remember the first game we played and we bottled a two goal lead to them so we already know exactly what Sheffield United are capable of doing to us and we also kind of need to get a bit of revenge as well because it was a bit embarrassing let's be honest. Now <laughs> Moving on to injury news, Kante is still out with an injury from the Watford game and Frank Lampard has just said in his in his pre-match press conference today that Billy Gilmore is out for three to four months with it after he's just had a knee operation after coming off injured I think in one of the last games. I'm not sure but Billy Gilmore is out for four months but which is obviously really sad news here especially when Billy Gilmore was going on the rise that he was on. Billy Gilmore I think will have had a low-key very frustrating season because he didn't really break into the first team that much until March when we played him against Liverpool and Everton and he had two brilliant man of the matches performances out of both of those games. Then lockdown happened and literally killed his form right there and then. We don't play for another three months. We come back, he's still getting some game time but obviously you would have preferred to continue on that rise of momentum that he was having back in March. And now he's got a four month injury straight off the bat. So for Billy Gilmore, it's definitely a frustrating year for him, but he's made an impression, so he can't beat himself up too much about that. In more positive news, Mateo Kovacic is back from injury, and Frank Lampard said he is going to be one of the names rumoured to, to be playing on Saturday, on Saturday. I'm not sure if he's going to be starting. Me personally, I do want to see him start because I do think that Jorginho and Kovacic pivot is going to work out. And that's been one of the key parts for us this season as well. And even on the point of Jorginho, potentially this injury to Billy Gilmore might have saved his position at Chelsea because ever since Billy came, Gilmore came in and started bossing the number six position and even showed a bit more aggression and athletic ability than Jorginho had, everyone was starting to slowly question whether Jorginho would be a Chelsea player next season or if we would try and sell him for the right price. So I feel like for Jorginho, his position is going to feel a lot more secure now for next season that Billy Gilmore is injured. So that might be a small positive to take. Obviously, no one wants to take a positive from an injury. But if you're trying to look at the positives in all situations, maybe Jorginho still has a role at this club. Um, in the 34 games Chelsea have played in the Premier League this season, we've scored 109 goals, which is 63 goals for us and 46 goals against. And Manchester City are the only club that has seen more goals than than Chelsea have this season. On the other end of the table, Sheffield United have only seen 68 goals this season, 35 goals for, 30, 33 against. So something definitely is going to give. Sheffield United are obviously looking the more defensively solid team, but they also seem to struggle to get goals as well. Us on the other hand, we can score goals, but we also struggle to keep clean sheets as well. So there is going to be a huge question of what's got, what is going to give. And if we're going to use the Crystal Palace game as a little example, because Crystal Palace are the only team in the Premier League that has seen less goals this season than Sheffield United, it's going to be a little bit tricky. And the one thing we are going to need is defensive solidity. And also, as much as I love Kepa, he really, really needs to start showing more key moments because it is getting very hard trying to defend Kepa. So I'm hoping for a more positive result. There is only four games left and 
if the ball is really in our court, we have control of our own destiny. Frank Lampard said that as well. We just need to focus on beating the teams that are in front of us. So if we can beat Sheffield United, that will go a very big way to this top to this top four or potentially top three race. And I get it has been a very frustrating season, but we have to look at the positives of this season. And that is we've been in this top four race for the majority of the season in the comfortable position inside of the top four. And no one really expected that of us. So there's like two different parallels to this a lot of people are looking at, at as if we were a bit more consistent maybe we would even be in a race for second but me personally still want to try and keep a level head because regardless no one really expected us to be doing as well as we're doing now this season so it's all about positives um let's go straight into my predicted lineup for the game there's going to be a lot of similar players from the crystal palace game but there will be a couple changes as well in goal it's going to be kappa um, there was a lot of people criticising the first goal on the Zaha screamer saying Kepa still should have done better for that goal but I still think it was a good hit from Wilfred Zaha and you're not really going to do anything about a good strike from that sort of range. Some people also saying Billy Gilmore was partly to blame because he was the guy that left his position free and gave Zaha that space to shoot but it wasn't really Gilmore's fault either because he went to try and intercept Van Arnholt who ends up getting the assist for the goal. Kepa starts in goal regardless, but I do want to see a bit more from him in games. Um, the back four, I would still keep unchanged because we haven't really done that a lot this season. I feel like that's also been a huge problem for us this season, defensive organisation and Kepa not having the same back four in front of him all season. So I'm going to have Reese James at right back. Didn't have the best of games against Crystal Palace either, but he's showing this regular feature of growing into games very slowly. And maybe as he continues to build his match fitness, he's going to get better and better and start to have more of an impact over the full 90 minutes. But I still wouldn't change him so far. And I'm going to go into that when I get to left back. Um, centre backs, this is going to be Andreas Christensen and Antonio Rudiger. No, not Rudiger, sorry. Uh, Kurt Zuma, I don't know why I said Rudiger. Uh, Christensen does need a better performance and we really want to see more of the Christensen against Manchester City but his inconsistencies have been so consistent this season if that even makes sense to you guys. The Crystal Palace game second goal we really could have done a lot better for and I feel like the West Ham game was the only reason why people didn't criticise him as much was because of how bad Rudiger was so I do want to try and see a more promising performance from Christensen. Kurt Zuma just more the same please like I've been replaying that tackle against Crystal Palace for days and days and days and I'm never getting old of it and those recovery tackles were a key part of why he rose to fame in 15-16 before that awful injury against Manchester United so it's glad to see him starting to get back to being the old Kurt Zuma so no reason to change him in the lineup either. Left back Azpilicueta most solid one personally out the back four except for Kurt Zuma in recent games and also in the case of our other left backs Marcus Alonso kind of look, looks like he's on mark time he hasn't played a single minute since that West Ham game and to be honest his West Ham performance was pathetic anyway and that third goal where he just jogged back I mean it's, it's starting to vex me even thinking about so yeah I'd keep Asby at left back he's more defensively solid and he puts more of a shift in um, in midfield I'm gonna go for Jorginho I think Jorginho was brilliant when he came on against Crystal Palace and didn't look off the pace at all he was still communicating and trying to lead the midfield in the press and trying to control the tempo of the game i'm, I'm gonna get some of his stats out as well 30 attempted passes 26 successfully distributed ending the tie with a passing accuracy of 86.7 percent and when Jorginho was on the pitch the whole tempo just slowed down and it was exactly what we needed for the last 10 minutes against crystal palace so we need someone with that sort of leadership in the midfield and we're going to put Kovacic in midfield next to him as well because that Jorginho and Kovacic pivot was a huge reason for why we were so good lot for ve for various periods of this season before the lockdown. And with Kovacic back from injury as well, I also think we need some steel in the midfield. I hate that Billy Gilmore is injured, but if we're being honest, that midfield of Gilmore, Mount and Barkley was far too lightweight. And it was obvious in the Crystal Palace game that they were being overran in the second half because they realised that they had the strength advantage over that midfield. And they made it count. So I'd like to see Jorginho and Kovacic in there because I feel like Kovacic can add a bit more steel into the midfield. Um, Mason Mount is the third midfield, midfielder I want to put in and he's one of the first names on the team sheet right now. His performances are excellent. And the reason why I'm putting him in as well is because he's going to be the guy to start the press and you need someone in that three-man midfield that's going to have output and is going to try and have a shot or, have, or try and have some sort of final end product. Kovacic and Jorginho, 
prefer to bring the ball forward and Jorginho prefers to control the game. But we don't have someone who's going to shoot. And I think that's what Mason Mount will give us. So that's why I'm going to put Mason Mount in the team as well. Front three also isn't going to change. We're going to have Willian on the right hand side because Willian just never runs out of fitness and he'll always be fit for a full 90. And his performances have been excellent. I think no one's been behind more goals this since we've come back from lockdown since Willian. And he's on limited time at this club anyway from the looks of it. So we might as well use him while we still have him. And while his performance is still this good. So William starts as well. On left side, it's obvious Christian Pulisic. Another guy who's on fire and just continues to take the control of the game. And to have key moments in matches. Pulisic is a gunman. And there's no reason why he doesn't play. So he's starting at left wing as well. And Olivier Giroud starts up front. Olivier Giroud's going to be good for 50, 60 minutes. His stamina's not going to be as good as it used to be because he's starting to age a little bit. But his style of play doesn't deteriorate with age because it's a very strength and mental-based part of the game. He will still be able to provide challenges to the centre-backs. He'll still be able to bring the best out of Pulisic and William by, by link-up play and delivering good balls to them. So Giroud starts as well. And also because even though Tammy Abraham got the goal, I still didn't really rate his performance against Crystal Palace I thought he was too he didn't win any of his 50 50s I didn't think his link up play was any good and I didn't think he was showing enough strength on the ball either for someone of his height he really does need to be a lot stronger and it's something that will improve in time but for right now I'd rather start Olivier Giroud guys this is your Sheffield United versus Chelsea preview let me know if you guys agree or disagree with any of my thoughts or any of, of the players in the lineup don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And we'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care and up the trails.